poder. Father, we thank you. And we come to you today, Lord God. We're standing in your presence. We have set this day aside that we might pray for those all across America and across the world today, Lord God, who are hurting, who are struggling today, Lord God, that the spirit within them is struggling today, Lord God, with fear. We need to set our hearts before you, Lord, to be set free, to receive the anointing of your presence, Lord God, like only you can give, to believe in the anointing that you have for us, You and you alone only have the answers for all of us, Lord, and for your people that are hurting today, those that are suffering, those that are desperate, Lord God. They've been gripped by fear because of all that's going on with COVID, the elections, their finances, their families, their lives, Lord, the sickness and disease, Lord God. So many people have so many problems today. Yet with you, all things are possible through the glory of our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we agree together right now in the name of Yeshua. So we stand amazed that you will touch your people like never before. Lord, we are praying for a breakthrough today. We are praying for a miracle today for those viewing us, Lord God, and for those that are here. We are praying for a breakthrough as we gather together here in one spirit, in one accord, in humility, and in the spirit of faith as we come before you, Lord God, for your blessing, as we cry out to you that you're the God that heals and the God that restores and the God that brings peace within us. Lord God, we need you. There are certain problems that we have no control. They're beyond our help. But we need you, Father God, in our life to make everything possible today, Lord God. And we thank you and we praise you, my God, and we pray for your eternal blessing upon everyone here. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said... And everybody said, Amen. one more time, and everybody said, Amen. praise the Lord. God is good. I know that there are many, many weary hearts today with what's going on, and we're watching history being made. And for so many of us that are, are viewing and seeing the election being stolen, And the things that are happening and the things that since the beginning when Trump walked down the elevator, the news media, Hollywood, the sports world, the liberals have been after him throughout these three and a half years. Every coverage has been 95% negative to Telemundo through Univision, and all the rest of them. And yet they want to elect the president. They want to tell you what to do. You got YouTube, Facebook. You got them doing the same thing. They want to censor you. You can rob, you can kill, you can destroy, you can burn, you can loot. Nothing said. Mention the name of Jesus, and they'll cut you off when you talk about God. These are the things and the times that we're facing and people don't understand. Our future hangs on the balance. As I share with you, I feel like many of the prophets that are declaring that all this will be overturned within a month or two. That God will have his way. I pray from our mouth to God's ears. Amen. And so we believe in the, in the trust in the Lord God of what he's doing for each and every one of us. Otherwise, this country will go back. There's so many things that people have not given a chance to hear the blessings for the Latinos, 
for the blacks and for the Asians and the women. The things that have been done because he gets no credit for any of it. Because all they want to do is down him. But those that understand what has happened for the military, that our military was squandered. We couldn't even fight a war. We didn't have enough bullets. And now we got plenty. And the new space war that we're starting up, because everything's going to be fought up there. Everything. There's so many things. And I believe that he'll be restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 If you have a Bible this morning, turn with me to 2 Chronicles 33. I want to give you a story, and I want to let you know, and I want you to understand. I think these are the times that we're living in today, the things that we're seeing, the things that are happening before our very eyes. I'll take a moment just to share so that hopefully we get an idea of the things that can happen. God is in the crossroads right now with us. Because we are in the crossroads of life. We can go like the world completely. But my question today is, can God save anyone today any, because of the hardening of the hearts of the people? Is anyone beyond the grace of God that God can, can touch? Beyond the grip of God that God can manifest himself? Surely we can look around. And see evil like never before in the world. You know, they boarded up Rodeo Drive and they boarded up New York and all these places. Because they said Trump supporters are going to destroy everything. Let me tell you, not one window, not one piece of glass has been broken. They want to blame us for their calamity. And yet we look back into the Old Testament this morning. And we see as God answers to us the things that we're asking right now. Hezekiah was the king at that time. Hezekiah was a man that loved the Lord God. Hezekiah was a man that had a relationship with the Lord. And the Lord honored him. The Lord blessed him. Isaiah came to Hezekiah and told him, Hezekiah, prepare yourself because you're going to die. Prepare yourself for death, Hezekiah. And Hezekiah looked around. He says, I have no one to leave my kingdom to. I have no children. I have nothing. Isaiah said, this is what's going to happen, Hezekiah. Hezekiah turned to the wall, and he began to cry out to God, to the God of Israel, to the God of his forefathers. He began to cry out to them, asking for deliverance and blessings like only he could give, asking to bless his life, to heal him, to touch him. And the Lord heard his prayers. And the Lord sent back Isaiah, his counselor, his prophet at that time. And the Lord, as he asked for more time in this world, the Lord strengthened Hezekiah. The Lord blessed him. And the Lord gave him 15 more years in his life. Hezekiah, Jehovah's strength, or Jehovah, a strong support of the Lord God. What a beautiful name, Hezekiah. So Hezekiah prayed because of the difficult times that were about him at that time. And yet the Lord answered his prayer because of the personal matters that were within his life. God began to touch him. Hezekiah humbled himself before the Lord God. At that time, 
He thanked God for the word that he sent to him that he would live and he would continue. And he set up beautiful places for the Lord. He began to set up altars for God and praising the Lord. He began, he began to give God all the glory. He knew his life before the Lord. You shall not die, Hezekiah, but you shall live. And Hezekiah started blessing the Lord again. And he became humble in his spirit. And the love of God was in him. That's why God gave him that sign and declared to him, you are going to move forward, Hezekiah. With these additional years, I'm going to change your life. These 15 years, Hezekiah, are going to make a difference. I respond to you today. The Lord told Hezekiah, because of his humbleness and because of his obedience and how he had lived his life, God reciprocated back to Hezekiah and he blessed him and he prospered him. God told him, I'm going to bless you beyond your expectations, Hezekiah. And at that time of his sickness, Hezekiah struggled, thinking, how can I leave my fortune and all the things that I own to a family member when I am barren? The Lord, as he touched his life, he began to grow. Three years after his recovery, Hezekiah had a son by the name of Manasseh. Hezekiah named him Manasseh. The name Manasseh means causing forgetfulness. And God allowed that. Manasseh was half Egyptian and half Jewish at that time. Manasseh holds right now the record for the longest king in Judah. Yet, he was evil in the sight of God. Manasseh was not like his father. He reigned for 42 years as the king of Israel, and Israel had one queen. Yet Hezekiah was buried close to King David because they honored him that much, because he was a man of God, and they realized him as being a blessed, blessed man. Manasseh was wicked. Let's start in chapter 33 of 2 Chronicles. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king. 12 years old. And he became king. And he reigned 50, notice, 55 years in Jerusalem. But he did evil. He did much evil. In the sight of the Lord God, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel, he built high places, notice, which Hezekiah, his father, had torn down. He raised up altars of Baal. Remember, they used to take their babies in the valley of Hinnon, and they would heat up that statue red hot, and they would place their babies as a good luck charm, as omens, like what we do with abortion today. And they were giving their babies up. And here we see that he rebuilt the places, verse 3, that Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. He raised up altars for Baal and made wooden images and worship all the hosts of heaven and serve them. He began to serve the host of heaven. 
He also built, verse 4, altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. He began to build altars. Manasseh challenged God's authority. He came against the things of God. He tried to defeat God and came against the authority of God. Ma men always will su suppress the truth of God, like we see today. We suppress the glory of the Lord to hold down the things of God. He didn't want the word of God. He didn't want the anointing of God. Manasseh refused the knowledge of God. He did not want to go there. And I ask you this morning, does God have to test us, all of us, to find out what's in our heart? How we love or dis the discord in our hearts or the things that we look at and don't want from the Lord? He doesn't. He doesn't have to test us to uncover the real motives of our heart. They speak out louder than words because of who we are before the Lord God. Manasseh wasn't taught that. Manasseh picked up the customs of that day and started to serve the pagan gods. How many of our children and grandchildren have been saved. When they get old enough, they walk away from the glory of God. And you have parents struggling trying to get them back. Because of the decisions that we make that hurt us, that incarcerate us, That tries to destroy us. Because the, never, the devil never slumbers nor sleeps. You look. The millions and the thousands of men and women incarcerated. Because of bad choices. Because the devil wants to destroy their soul. And thank God for second chances. Thank God for his glory and his power. Thank God that he gives us back what the canker and the locust has tried to steal from us. Bless the Lord. The discord with the families, the loved ones of what they go through, not knowing the pain and the heartache upon the parents. Because we struggle to follow the Lord God according to his will. Manasseh wasn't taught to be that way. He wasn't taught to serve pagan gods. Manasseh was influenced by the world standards, the customs, and the idols of, of today. Just like so many of our Young people today are paying so much money to go to universities and learn nothing. They become atheists because of the professors and the teachers that are there that are anti-God. The teachers today, they want to rule our lives by the social things and the customs just like we're seeing our children struggling today to maintain what they once believed. They'll turn around and tell you, I don't believe that no more. Common sense is taken out. And yet, Manasseh, notice he built altars, verse 4, in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said to, notice, to Jerusalem, my name shall live forever. Verse 5. 
And he built altars for, notice, for all the hosts of heaven, the zodiac, the comets, the soothsayers, and the inner court and in the outer court. Notice verse 6. He also caused his sons to pass through the fire in the valley. Notice his sons of the valley of Hinnon. He sacrificed his children too. He practiced Hussein, used witchcraft and sorcery, consulted mediums and spiritualists. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord God. To provoke him to anger. The Lord says, Manasseh, you're ticking me off with what you're doing. With what you're doing. He took idols of wood and carved them out. Pornographic idols of wood and cut them out. And placed them in the presence of the Lord God. In the altar of God. Defying God. I don't believe there's a God. And defying God with the zodiac and the constellations and asking for power from the constellation, the soothsaying, the divination, the white magic, the mysticalism that we see today. So much. And yet avoiding the calling of God. Avoiding that God was calling them. He was looking to divinations, animals, looking at all the wrong things, the witchcraft, the sorcery, the rituals of the world, and not God. The struggles that came, the mediums that would come, the palm readers, those that contacted the dead. The things that he was doing were wrong. And like we look at America today, for the future of our children and our grandchildren, what we are building as a legacy for our families and our loved ones, that one day they will be blessed beyond measure. But we are struggling with them because we're not telling them the truth. We look at America as we've torn down our memorials, our statues. We've torn everything down that once meant something for us. Men and women went to war. And gave their lives and shed their blood. That we would be a free world. That we would be a free people. We took the Ten Commandments out of our courtrooms. Because it made people uncomfortable. They didn't want the Ten Commandments of God. They didn't want God in our courts and in our system. Liberals that said, no, we don't want God. Take the Ten Commandments out. We tore down the commandments of God in the public courts. The scriptures that were written in the walls we took them down. What Manasseh did in his day, we have done it in our time, but in a different way. We have so many different callings. They killed so many babies that the Lord said, that is enough. They were placing them in jars, pickle jars, and putting them in the walls as a good luck charm, as an omen. And they were bringing their babies and placing them on the altar like we place ours on the abortion table. 60 million babies we have killed. I don't understand as a mother 
God forgive you, God bless you if you had an abortion, but, but you're serving the Lord. God is blessing you. But for those that think that is your right just to kill, and you have a child that you love, that you adore, has your characteristics, has your eyes, or, or is a part of you, but you take the other one and you kill them. If you had given it time, it'd be just like the other child. Someone that you could not part with. Someone that you could not let go of because of your love. I just don't see the common sense and the abortion issue of killing our own. That doesn't make sense to me. And say, that is my right! How about the right of that child? Who protects that unborn baby that is a human being? Who protects that baby? And just like the days of Manasseh we are living today. Certain people say, no, I don't want the Ten Commandments. Take God out of the Constitution. Take God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. You see, God hasn't failed us. We fail God. Like I shared with you last week that people say, where is God at this time? Where is God right now? God is where we left him. Outside of our world, in a liberal world where you left him. That's where God is. And we wonder why judgment with earthquakes, hurricanes, flooding, fires, famine, pestilence that's upon the land right now as I speak. Things are happening around the world. And you're going to see the prices. If this sticks, you're going to see everything change. Your taxes are going to go up. Prices are going to go up. You're going to lose a lot of benefits. Mark my words. You're going to lose a lot. It's going to be a time of calamity, just like it was in the time of Manasseh. That's why we as the people of God need to pray. When Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego were thrown in the fiery pit, God intervened. And God blessed them. And God raised them up. And God will be with us again. And God will defend us. He's the God of miracles. We need to cry out to our God and watch him. Watch the things that he's going to do. Just keep praying and seeking the Lord and watch the Lord begin to intervene. We need to bring back the memorials for our children that will stand the commandments of God that mean something to us. That in God we trust. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we trust in Yeshua. That he is our light. That our public courts would know the glory of the Lord. We disevolved. We didn't want prayer. Take prayer out of our schools and our children became more heathen. Take prayer out. Take the Bible out. We don't want you to have any of that. I remember as a little boy, I've shared with you before, in the fourth grade, the nuns would come and take us from the school. And we would have a long line of children going to catechism to St. Louis at that time. 
And they'd walk us all the way down to the church so that we could learn to make our confirmations and our holy communions. And, and it was time that the school allowed us to go to be blessed, to learn about God. They shut everything down. Don't come wearing any shirts with Jesus as God or Yeshua or things of the Lord God. That's offensive to me. You would think they're possessed by the devil. That they send you home. If you have a t-shirt that make America great, they want to send you home. Where's our freedom? We've taken God out of our colleges. We've taken prayer, the commandments of God. We don't want to hear prayer. Every morning we would stand. Wherever we were playing on the field at our schools when we were little, we'd hear it coming on, and we'd all stand wherever we were at. We'd pledge allegiance to God, all of us. And the teachers would say a prayer for us that day. And then we would resume our day. All that's gone. There's no patriotism. We looked at the flag and we respected the flag of America. We understood the blessings of that flag. They taught us how to love God, how to love our families, how to love each other, how to respect the flag of the United States. That's gone. That is gone. It took prayer out to find respect and love for God in our schools. Our children that needed prayer and taken out the Ten Commandments and they twisted them. They didn't want us to hear them. And brought in their sinful lifestyles. But that's not censored, but we are censored. Hezekiah must have been turning over his grave when he looked at his son, Manasseh. Manasseh turned to the heathen gods of the zodiac, the planets, and looking for power without commitment. That's like so many of us today. We want power without the commitment of God in our lives. We need the power of the Lord God in our lives, in our homes. That we cover them with the blood of Jesus. That we know the anointing of the Lord God as we pray for them. Because one day they'll be parents. And one day they'll have children. And their children's children will grow. That you leave a legacy of respect and love for God Almighty. And the blessings of this nation. Yet, from Manasseh, he went to the Zodiac, wanting power, any way he could get it. It's like us, we want to be saved, but without commitment. Oh, I'm saved, but I don't have to go to church. I'm saved, but I believe in all the other things of the world. But I'm saved! That you hear so many of these politicians they tell you that they're saved, and you look at their lives, and you know they're not. You know they're not. When they fight for all the things that are against God, and all their morals, they fight against the things of God. But the divinations, as Manasseh wanted to look into the future, because he was evil, seeking control of others like we see today. They want to control you. Hollywood wants to control you. The news media wants to control you. The internet wants to control you. Everyone wants to control you. But we serve a higher power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yahshua, Yahshua is our God. 
We serve a higher power in the name of Jesus. The host of heaven is the Lord God Almighty. Not the moon. Not the stars. Not anyone but Jesus Christ. Yeshua. The Lord God. Give him praise. Today we see pornography like we've never seen before. Now you can just turn it on on the comfort of your home and turn your television. Before people were nervous that neighbors would see them going to the porno films and to the shows. And so that would keep people away. But now you could look in your phone. You could look at your home and turn on pornography that is a big, big thing today. It's amazing that we don't understand the temptation, what the devil wants to do to deceive you by pornography, to control your mind and your heart with nothing but, it's not right, it's not, it's filth. That's not love. That's a flame that burns with evil. It's not a flame that burns with compassion. Pornography has destroyed many, many pastors. Pornography has destroyed many homes, many family members. And our young children that are looking at pornography today not realizing the habits and all the diseases that are out there today. It's a common thing. I like you, you like me, let's lie together. It's not love. It's not affection. And yet we see today the problems with parents with diseases that we don't even know. In my days, big thing was gonorrhea and syphilis. Ooh, that was big. But today, it's much, much worse than that with the diseases of today. God calls us to understand the things that we see because Satan is at work to destroy us. He's at work to bring us and to undermine the family. Can our family survive? In the situations that we face today, can our family survive in harmony and peace? Because of all the things that are coming in that are negative, nothing to build but to destroy and to conquer and to possess. You and your families. Families are unhappy. Look at all these kids that are running around, destroying, doing whatever. There's an anger inside of them. Why are they unhappy? And most of them come from good homes. They're not poverty stricken. Look at today the homeless that we see. In San Francisco, Riverside, everywhere you go, don't matter where you go, the homeless that are struggling today, people are frustrated. It's like there's no law and order. It's like we're going to conquer and we want to do what we, we got to do to get power. People's minds have left them. They're frustrated and depressed. Homes are depressed because of what's going on. And our children have no hope today. They have no hope for the future. When they see us struggling. When they see us going through a time and a season. Manasseh, verse 5, built altars for all the hosts of heaven. The zodiac, 
the comets, the moon, the stars. In the outer court, in the inner court, putting the pornography thing, things that he carved out. He also, noticed he caused his sons to pass through the valley of Hinnon. I'll sacrifice you too. Sexual expressions in the glory of God. He practiced soothsaying, using witchcraft and sorcery. Notice, and consulted with mediums and spiritualists. He did much, much evil in the sight of the Lord. Verse 7, and he even set carved images to provoke the Lord to anger. God says, Manasseh, you're, you're pushing it, man. Just like many of you and many of us that push it and push it and push it. Verse 7, he even set up carved images which he had made in the house of God. Notice which God had said to David and to Solomon, his son. In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name for everlasting and everlasting and forever. But he was provoking God in everything that he did. Trying to just do everything in his sense. And yet not knowing that our children need hope. Our children need fathers and mothers that love them. That teach them to hear the voice of God. Because if you don't spend time with them, someone else is. And someone else is going to instill their morals on them. Our children need security. That they know that they're loved from their father and mothers. That security that will give them character. Parents today that learn to make prayer their priority with their children and their families. Build on the word of God. Build on the word of God. If not, we will sacrifice our future for the pleasure of the present. And you will weep, and you will mourn, and you will cry one day. When your son or your daughter is incarcerated for something dumb, because the enemy comes to rob and steal, and conquer your lives. We as parents need to teach our children not to sacrifice their future. But we live today for ourselves. Most parents in the home don't even communicate with their children. Oh, we live in the same house. What do they want? There's food in the refrigerator and they got a roof over their head. What else do they want? Leave me alone. They need you, mom and dad. They need you. They need you. And sometimes they need a swift kick. Yeah. Don't spare the rod and ruin the child. Sometimes they need a blessing, a good blessing, a teachable blessing. Hello. As we say, una buena nalgada. In the name of Jesus, of course. They need a firm hand. Just as much love as I show them, I must show them discipline too. So they can learn to respect. And they can learn to love. To build in them character by making that a priority. And showing our children how much we love them. How much we care. It's hard. It's hard when you look at your children and feel that they're getting away from you. 
and it seems like you have no power to over them any longer. Because we have no vision for them. They need to be taught. They need to be uplifted. They need to be encouraged. For some of us as parents, we have too much confidence. And that's our weakness. Because we have too much confidence. That becomes a problem. Because I need to know. I have to spend time. I have to share with them. I have to show them. We look at crime today. It's humongous. But... Kamala wants to empty the jails and the prisons. So they come back on the street with you. So there's no such thing. They were paying for people that were being arrested while they were looting and burning. They were paying for them to get out. So they would go in and go back out again. Because Joe Biden and Kamala were paying and Hollywood was paying for them to be released. Where is our society? We're living like in the days of Manasseh. Just like Manasseh, we look at crime, we look at pornography, the new age, the drugs, the zodiac. Look at the kids in the street. They're not all there. You see them hitting themselves, talking to themselves. Young, young, young Kids, they're gone. Hello, nobody's home. The lights are on, but nobody's home. You know how many times we got to run them off from here? They come and squat. It's amazing. I mean, who takes care of them? Nobody. We don't have any more mental institutions. So many of them fried their brains already with drugs. They've abused themselves. And yet we don't realize. I couldn't sleep if one of my children was out there at night. I'll be danged. I couldn't sleep. I'd be driving all night looking for them. I would not be able to sleep. That would just tear my heart out. I see grandmas. I see grandpas out there. Where's their families? I see people that don't care no more and are hooked on all this stuff. They come to the food bank sometimes. We see them. We try to help them. I built a shower back here. At times I, I bring them in so they can take a a shower and give them something to wear and give them something to eat. It's amazing. But it's a new age. Do whatever feels good in your life. That, that, that's all that matters. Oh, you believe in God? Oh, man. Do you realize how many churches are being robbed today? How many churches are being broken into? Because there's no respect for God. There's no respect for the house of worship any longer. Do what you want to do. That's why the Bible says the harvest is past and the summer is ended. And you're still not saved. You're still not saved. Wicked Manasseh. Like what we're seeing today. It's heartbreaking to see the things that are happening right before our very eyes. Verse 7. He even set up carved images of idols which he had made in the house of God. Of which God had said to David and Solomon, his son. In this house in Jerusalem, which I have chosen... Out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. I will put my name forever. Verse 8. And I will not again remove the foot of Israel from the land 
which I have appointed for, notice, for your forefathers. Only if they are careful to do that, what I have commanded them according to the whole law. Notice in the statutes that God has given us and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. You were told, you've been taught, you've been tutored. And many of us have been taught and many of us have been tutored. And yet many, many Christians today are backslidden. They're back into the world. Verse 9. So Manasseh subdued Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Notice. To do more evil than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. Did you see the news media trying to say that it was the Trump supporters that were looting and breaking windows and burning and doing all these things? They were the news media. Oh, no, no, those, those are not. And you see the city burning behind him as he's talking. The newscaster excusing the rebellion, excusing it. And you got to go, are my lying eyes deceiving me, what you're seeing? Over and over and over as you look and see what was going on. Not one window, not one piece of glass, not one piece of plywood has been torn down. Of course, we don't agree with the decision. Of course not. We let God deal with it. We pray and you watch it. God, if God doesn't overturn this, Amen. and you watch the hand of God, right. you watch the Lord God, Amen. and if you don't have faith, then you are fighting against God. That's, right. That's all I can tell you, Amen. and you better watch that you don't fight against God. Believe and trust in the Lord God Almighty, because he has the power. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Give him praise. Amen. He has the power. Not a bunch of crazy politicians that are anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-prayer and want to kill babies. No, no. Want to live like Sodom and Gomorrah. They want to live like in the days of Noah and think they're pleasing God. And they'll tell you, I, I know God. Yeah, so do the demons in hell. They know who he is too. And they tremble, is right. Notice verse 10. And the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they would not listen. Like so many of us today, that will not listen to the calling of God, to the glory of God. Notice verse 11. Therefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the armies of the kings of Syria. God says, all right, you don't want to listen? All right. I'm going to allow your enemies to conquer you. As you go through the Old Testament, you've seen this going on over and over and over again. When Israel would rebuke God, Israel would, would disobey God, God said, okay. And because of them placing their babies in the arms of Baal, the Lord allowed them to be captured and taken to Babylon. They stood there in captivity for 500 years because they wouldn't listen to God. We've seen the miracles of God. We felt the anointing of God. We've seen the blessing and the healing and the power of our Lord God. And yet so many have turned their back on God. Woe to you. Who think good is evil and evil is good. The Lord God allowed the Syrians who took Manasseh. They captured him. And they put a hook in his nose. And tied him up in chains. And they led him like an animal to their camp. The Lord allowed them to hook him. 
notice, who took Manasseh with hooks, bound him with bronze feathers. They got him good and carried him off to Babylon. Now that Manasseh knows what's going on in his life, he starts to think back. This of what I've been doing is not working so good. There is a point in time when God says, enough, enough, ya basta, that's enough, no more. God helps us to understand. But notice verse 12. And now when he was in affliction, what did he do? He employed the Lord. He called on the Lord. He called on the Lord his God. And he humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. Why didn't he call for the zodiac, the comets, the soothsayers, the witchcraft, the palm readers? Why didn't he call on them? The host of heaven, why didn't he call on them? Because there is no power. The power is in Jesus, in Yeshua. He knew there was no power there. The power is in Yeshua. Our God is a gracious God. Hallelujah. He humbled himself greatly before the God of his forefathers. And he prayed to him. And he received. He was intrigued by the Lord God. What is it going to take for us as America to turn around and seek the Lord? If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and repent. Like Manasseh, I would hear from heaven and I would heal their land. And I would bless them. He heard the blessings of God and brought him back. Notice, to Jerusalem, into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord God is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said this to say this to you this morning. If God, and for those of you that are watching through the internet, if God can forgive a, vi a vile, evil, wicked man like Manasseh. How much more can he forgive you when you invite him back into your life? Hallelujah. Give him praise. How much more will God forgive you and love you? If Manasseh found it in his heart and God blessed him and God raised him up, how much more will God forgive you? If you call on the name of the Lord God. Amen. If he for, forgave an evil, vile man that did everything despicable in the eyes of God. And God gave him favor. And God lifted him up. And God blessed him. Whatever you've gone through, remember, we serve the God of heaven. Don't allow the devil to try to control you. You serve a higher power. Amen. Reach out to him, Amen. and he is going to bless you. Amen? Amen. I want to leave you with this. I do believe millions of Christians are in turmoil right now for what has taken place with the cheating and the problems that existed through all this election. It was pre-planned, but they know it. I believe it will be resolved. But I want to leave you with this scripture. In Psalms 46, 10. Be still, my people, and know that I am God. And I will be exalted among all the nations. Nothing's going on that he doesn't know. 
and I will be exalted upon all the earth. That's the God that we serve. And he's getting ready to make his move. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. The Lord is going to fight for you. And you shall be held in peace. In other words, in the midst of the battle, God is going to come and he's going to bless you. He's going to uplift you and he's going to strengthen you. Believe in the Lord, your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. Thus saith the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. And I do believe that God is going to show things to us that we've never imagined in our lives and that the spirit of the living God is going to come back and bless and restore and uplift in the name of Jesus because God is greater than anything that we can imagine. So if you're frustrated and you're hurting, pray to the good Lord. Stand on the promises of God. It isn't over till God says it's over. I don't care what Hollywood says. I don't care what the Democratic Party says. I don't care what Pelosi says. I care what Jesus says. I care what the Messiah says. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can't fight God. It is impossible. So for those of you that are watching us in the internet, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you, and the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace like a river for you and your families and restore you. Take inventory of your life with your children. Take inventory of the things you want to change for them, that you want to bless them, and leave a legacy for them. We love you in the Lord. We pray for you here at Lake Hills. And we ask for God's eternal blessing upon you. I pray for your families and your loved ones. May the Lord bless you. And may God bless America. May God bless our president. And may God bless Israel. God bless you. Have a blessed week this week. Keep looking up. Because you're going to see the hand of God move like you've never seen it before. Hallelujah. We love you. God bless you. For those of you that are here that want prayer, I want you to come to the front. We're going to sing a song, and if you need prayer...